This is Perry with Wilderness Innovation. Um, I'm just out here in my little workshop. Um, and I just wanted to do just a quick little whiteboard thing of what I call the bipod hammock leg. The reason I like the bipod hammock leg is because it gives me an opportunity to pitch my hammock in places that are really difficult to do it in. Like a lot of a lot of times out on our desert, there's limited trees, and I camp a lot out there. If you've watched my videos, and and at other times, just the spacing and stuff, or trees too small to support you very well, or something like that. The bipod hammock leg makes it easy, so you only have to find one suitable anchor point for one end of your hammock. The bipod leg is the other end. So I can I can hang off my like the my truck bed on one side and then put the light bipod out on the for the other end of my hammock. That works great. Or one good tree, or even a rock location, or whatever it might be. This just makes it so easy. If you wanted, you could make a couple of these, you know. But anyway, I'm just gonna show you how to make one of them. Okay, so it consists of, it makes into, of course, a bipod, which looks like an A-frame. Well, if you're vehicle camping, you don't, the weight isn't a big issue. This one that I made here is four pounds, four ounces, you know, so it's not a, it's not a big issue. Uh, two pieces, well, four pieces of EMT conduit, two pieces, three-quarter inch diameter, two pieces, half-inch diameter, the three-quarter inch I cut to 33 inches long. The half inch I cut to 36 inches long. Just because it makes it so when you collapse it, you can leave your bolt or pin in this end. And it will collapse in. This hole at this end allows the spring clip that's here to pop into that hole so it holds it collapsed. Not that you really have to, but I just did it that way. We're, we're actually going to we'll actually whip one up here. So our first hole right here on the big end, four inches in. I drilled all the holes, three eighths diameter. You can do whatever you want. Um, like you could go the holes for the spring clip. They could be, I think, quarter inch or something like that. I just did them all three eighths, but whatever you want. Um, and then up at this end. I have a 3 8 3 8 hole up here drilled all the way through. And, um, and then I put a pin, which I'll show you instead of a bolt, but you could put a bolt through there, whatever you want. And then this whole thing will collapse down to be about 3 feet long. Okay. Now when I set this thing up, I usually try to be about, I don't measure it or anything, but I found about 3 feet apart on the legs is plenty stable. And that will give you about six, 60 inches tall, five feet tall at the crossing point right here. So now we can go outside and I'll show you. I've got a finished one. It's actually one I've been using for, gosh, I don't know, four months or maybe long. Maybe, I don't know, five, six months. Maybe, I don't know. It's been a little bit. But I, I just repainted it, kind of touched it up. Um, you know, it's metal on metal, metal sliding into metal. So your paint job, you're going to have to redo it every so often. If if you want to paint it, you don't have to paint it. But I kind of like it. Anyway, let's go outside and check this thing out. All right, so here's my bipod right here. Like I say, this is one I've been using maybe four to six months or something like that. So you can see it's right here at the crossing point. It's about nose high on me, about 60 inches. And then I'll hook my quick connects off of my poncho onto here. I'll just drop it over the end of that. And on the other here, I'll just drop my cord I'm using to anchor out on this end. You can see right here that I've got a, I can't remember what we call this, a clevis pin or something, I don't know. This one's got some holes in it. And then it comes with a like a cotter pin type deal. So this is a 3 8 inch hole. I mean, you don't need much seriously to hold all this, but I don't know. I just did it. It works. 
Then I just put this washer on, you don't really need it, but. But I put the washer on this side just just because then this pin isn't rubbing right, ag right against the, the conduit like it matters, right? <laughs> hey, whatever. Okay, so that's all there really is to this thing. It's pretty simple. And um, so now when I want to collapse it, I have, well, let me just slide this all the way off. So I have a spring clip in here, which I think I showed you. I got a spring clip in here, so that just pops out. I just drop it in here. This one has two holes, one's at two inches, one's at four. I don't know. I really like the four better because you've got more support going all the way up here. I don't know. Probably doesn't matter. <laughs> Probably doesn't matter at all. Anyway. So anyway, so when you're done using it, you just slide this thing up. And like that, you just collapse them down. And I've made a Cordura bag, which I'll show you. I made a Cordura bag that this all fits in. Anyway, so that way it's compact, it's about three feet long, shade over three feet long. You know, I just throw it in the side of my truck or whatever, it's good to go. It takes up almost no room, it weighs about four pounds. It's a simple little deal, man. Now, obviously, it's galvanized conduit, so it doesn't take paint very well. There are some things you can put on galvanized, so they'll take paint. But just in my little town here, 3,000 people, the little hardware store, I just got two different camos. I used to have, I used to have three, <clears throat> so it's kind of like a dark OD, like a tan or it's not quite as dark as coyote <clears throat> and then I had a an OD green which is you know a lighter green but it's just too much to try to put three colors on here so I just basically do diagonal stripes so I lay all my conduit out and I just spray it a diagonal just so it doesn't look like bands of color you know it kind of breaks it up a little and I just spray it off give it some good coats let it dry good in between okay so here's a bag I made for this setup using multicam Cordura it's the same thing we make our HD ponchos out of um, I'm not really offering this on my website but I don't know we'll just kind of see if you have interest the thing about it is we probably probably wouldn't have enough demand to like offer a bunch of colors in this thing you know you know I don't know if if I if we decide to do bags for these well because everybody might not make them the same size as me because if you want to make yours taller you can I just I have a from um, from tents outdoor I have a like a single extending aluminum extending pole uh, to use for a leg and if you've watched many of my videos or Instagram or whatever Facebook you've probably seen uh, seen that stand on there being used I've used it a really a real lot the thing about a single leg is you have to have two anchor points and a lot of the desert I get out onto has like this much sand and then it's bedrock so if you're out there, a lot of times it's difficult to find a couple good points. I mean, one time I went like 30 feet to find a good anchor point. <laughs> and, it's, and if you have to find two of them, it's just that much harder. So by using the bipod, you know, if I was backpacking or something, it would be different. You want lightweight, whatever. But with the bipod, I only need one anchor point, And I can anchor to a single piece of sagebrush or whatever. I mean, I don't have to have anything big at all. It really doesn't take that much because you angle this thing a little bit, which makes some of the force of your weight drive into the ground rather than the whole thing driving down to your anchor point. 
So it doesn't take that much stress, you know, on your anchor point to hold you up. Okay, so anyway, so that's that. So let's see about putting something together. How about that? All right, so down here on the ground, I've got some old, just some pieces of conduit. So, oh, that's got a bend in it. I don't want that one. Okay, there's one. That's too short. Should add my tape measure out. Well, I've got some full lengths down there if I need to. Anyway. Here's some three-quarter inch. I'll just take the couplings off the end. Anyway, so down in here is just a just a pile of access and eyesore, this whole thing. I gotta get rid of it, but I'm in the process. <laughs> anyway, the conduit down there just leftovers from projects and stuff like that. So because I'm a cheapskate, I don't throw things away until I have to. Or until I don't have any room to store them anymore. So let's take these couplings off of here. I can't remember what I used use those for. Okay. And you see I've already I've already marked these two half inch conduits at uh, 36 inches. And we're gonna mark these two at 33 Okay I could do this on a table inside or whatever, but I Don't really want to so what I've done is I did 33 inches on that other one 33 and and, you know, nothing here is that critical. I mean, it doesn't matter if I'm off a little. Okay. So there's my cut here, cut there. And I'll have them cut to length. You can you can cut this conduit with anything like a, a cutter like this will work fine. Or even I have a tinier one for, uh, for copper tubing. But this works fine. You can use a hacksaw. Whatever you want. I've got this thing laying around, so there's no point not using it. And of course, uh, using tools like this, always safety glasses. There's only got one set of eyes. And I'd like to like to keep them till I die. Okay, here we go. A little noise. More to go. Let's do the two big diameters first. Okay, so there's all my, there's my legs right there. Okay, so what I want to do is deburr all the ends, especially these ones that I just cut, because they're going to be really sharp. There we go.
basically that's all I've got to do on the outside and then I either take my pocket knife or since I have this with me it's got a little flip out deburr blade so just run that around in there just to take off any sharp edge doesn't it's not that big a deal it's mostly you know you just don't want to be cutting yourself or whatever you know what I mean And I'll probably, I'll probably do hit this once again just a little bit when I drill the holes. I mean, there's really nothing here that would really that would matter too much. You're really not going against anything on the ends, but I mean, you don't want to get out camping and cut yourself because you got a sharp edge. Okay, on one end here, I need to be two inches. That's where my pin or bolt would be going. And again, it's not critical. And on the other end. You just need to be one inch. Okay. Let's do these half inch. So this is the half inch conduit, the one that slides inside the other one. So the one inch out one is where I got these from ponds, I think pond supply five or six years ago. Anyway, so, yeah, so all I got to do is, I don't have to, I don't have to drill this hole all the way through, because I can just slide it in there, and that'll let it stick out fine. So let me do, I'm going to pilot hole everything with um, this smaller bit, because I'm kind of more or less freehanding it, and it'll be easier to get my hole started. Okay, I'll kind of put this out here so I think you can see it. Raise up a little here. If I was doing a bunch of these, you know, I'd clamp everything down and put stops and all that sort of thing so it'd be, I wouldn't have to fiddle around at all. But. And it's not necessary, but I, like I'm just kind of, I should have done this when I marked it. A lot of times I'll mark right on the weld line, so you can have all the holes kind of facing the same way. It doesn't really make any difference, but, other than for aesthetics. Now this one... This one goes all the way through. There we go. Okay. I'll just do the other one and then we'll move to the big ones. All right, so now on these three quarter inch tubes, on one end we're going in four inches. Right there. That one was already marked. I'll have to kind of scribble that out four inches and then on the other end is one inch so that's going to be easy right I'll mark them so they're up same okay so now I'll drill these and then I'll show you some of them I enlarged to 3 8. Okay, now the holes on here that are four inches in, that's where the spring clip's going to come up through. I only want to drill on one side. 
So that's all I got to do on that one. Okay, so now I'm going to enlarge these holes to three quarter inch. And this one goes all the way through. And this one, this one is where the spring pin is going to pop up through from the smaller diameter uh, conduit. So it only needs to go, it only needs to go, I could even just leave it like that. The, the button will go up through it, but it's a little harder to index it. So I like to oversize the hole. Okay, so there's one of them done. Now we'll go ahead and do the other one here. My iPad monitor I was using to, so I could see what I'm filming. The sun came out from the clouds, got it too hot, so I have to cool it down. Okay, so that's just one side on that one. And this other, and you'll see when I get all done why some is one side, two side, or whatever. Okay. Is that one done? Okay, now we're going back to the uh, half inch diameter. And this needs to be three quarter inch or three eighths inch because this is where our bolt or pin is going to go through. I could just use that size, it's plenty strong. But since I'm using a a 5 16 pin and I want this to be I want this to be 3 8 okay so there's that one done now the other one I just left the pilot hole there I didn't enlarge it like I did on the one I showed you that I've already been using and I did something different but I just shoved the spring pin up in there it's hard to get in there because the inside diameter of this high half inch, the inside diameter of this half inch conduit is kind of small. You have to force that thing in there. But once it's in there, I think this is actually going to be better. Okay, so. Get this one. And in this one, we'll just leave as is, because that spring pin is going to come up through there. All right. So now you can see that spring pin is in here, and it goes in. It goes in this way, right here. Okay. So you'll see when I shove this in there. That thing does not want to go in there. What I did on that other one was I just kind of forced. I don't know, maybe I can't do it this one. The other I just kind of forced it in there. doesn't really want to oh there we go soften a little bit there take a little bit of the spring out of it there we go okay so now I got to get this I kind of got a little cockeyed there getting it in there just kind of there we go so there's my hole there so now I just want to do this here, shove that down. There we 
getting close. There we go, popped it through. Yeah, it's got plenty of it's got plenty of spring action to it. And when I look inside of there, it's all the way up against the inside wall of the tubing. So that's gonna be perfect. Okay. So now what happens is you gotta go from this way down. So that's how it'll be right there. You press the button and then when you collapse it, see when it gets down to the bottom, that spring clip will be right there that holds everything together. So that's all there is to it. Now there are some burrs on this right here where the drill bit came out. So I'm going to put those on the belt sander and kind of clean that up. Okay, so I'm going to deburr these. You see, I'm clean around that hole there and there. I try to sand a little bit all the way around. That way I know I've got it the bird well. All right, so now we're actually, we can actually put this thing together. So the short end, the one inch, one inch back goes in here. There is one other thing we're gonna do here though. But, all right, so there we go. So you can see, in just a few minutes, half hour or something, you can make yourself a set of these. And you can be good to go. Now this hole might be a little tight because, well actually it worked fine. <laughs> you say because I sand in it so it might have thrown a burr to the inside but we're actually just fine so here we are a set of them made that's it that's all there is to it almost there's one more thing I want to show you it's something I did on mine I don't know if you can see so Actually, I might not even do it here. Because I think the way I crammed this uh, spring clip in here, on mine that I made, I, you know, these spring clips are, these spring clips are double-sided. And since, you know, you saw, I had to really force this thing to get it in the tubing. So on the ones that I showed you that I already painted up and everything, I cut, I cut this button off right here. So I only had one button and then just this leg. 
but since I didn't do that on these, I just forced it in there. It's making that, it's making the button stick out farther. So on mine, I'll just show you what I did. So on mine, I have an old, it's not really a chisel, kind of almost, kind of like a chisel, but it's not sharp. And I dinged, I dinged the opposite side from the button. Well, I dinged the opposite side to shrink the diameter. So that way there's not as much wobble in it. But realistically, this is fine, just how it is. We're kind of a resort town, so we get a lot of four-wheelers driving around side by side and stuff. Now if I wanted to, I could ding the same way with the chisel in a couple different places just to kind of push this smaller conduit against that other side so there wouldn't be as much play, but even with the ones I got, I've never had a problem. So, so yeah, I think we're, I think we're good to go. Now, you might ask, why? Well, well, we have to have a hole in the bottom anyway. Well, we have to have one hole. We don't have to. I put the one hole in the bottom so that I put the one hole in the bottom so that when I press the spring clip here when it comes down it locks into there well, I didn't really need to go all the way through but the reason I did is because so if you've set up like this and you're on kind of slick rock or maybe even gravel over rock or something your legs might want to spread in the night so I've got it, I made the hole go all the way through because I can put a piece of cord, like I have some Dyneema cords and stuff. I put a piece of cord or whatever through there so that these legs can't spread farther apart than three feet or so. So anyway, that's what that's for. But, but really this guy right here is, it's ready to use. And if you don't care about painting it, which I used mine quite a while without painting it. You know, you can, there we go. You can do that. Let's see, there we go. So it's only about three feet long. And it's a set of nice legs. So hopefully that helps you. And I'm sure all of you can figure it out without this video, but. Sometimes it's nice just to watch because then you just got it in your head. <laughs> anyway, thanks for thanks for watching Wilderness Innovation, Perry Peacock. Uh, hopefully, maybe I'll do some projects like this, showing some. A lot of people want me to show my tent to stand, how to make that, and I'll I'll probably do that too. Uh, it's a little more complicated than this, but not a whole lot. There is one more thing that I did want to show you that I've been too lazy to do and that is you want to put some kind of a cap on the end because what happens is like this I was in kind of a dirt, kind of a clay soil so now I'm having a hard time getting the the mud out of the end of there See, plus if you're in sand and that's clear open this thing will sink in the sand like this far. So if you close that off with something, whatever you want. I was thinking about maybe just some feet that stick over here, like a rubber foot or something. I don't know. I haven't decided which is why I have mud in there. I haven't decided what to do about it. <laughs> well, the poncho, the poncho here has the quick connect option built-in uh, Dyneema cords and I brought along the daisy chain webbing which has a loop every three inches and uh, allows easy adjustment 
got any knots and stuff like that. And you get two of them. So this one is all I need. And I'll wrap that around this one to a tree. I'll just go right in here. Tuck the other long end through the eye there. Okay. So now I got that. The toggle right here will lay that right there. Alright, so all of our ponchos can also be made into hammocks. Alright, but today we're talking about hammocks. So, so all you do is reach in the end here and pull it out. Those two eyes right there. So those two eyes right there. I just take the daisy chain web and just pull it up through those eyes. And I pull it up to wherever I want, like say right there. And I just stick the toggle through it like that. So that end is done. So I'm hooked up to the tree there. The end is gathered, gathered in hammock. This end I haven't hooked up yet. So there you go. Now I'm going to hook this end to my bipod legs. Okay, I'm going to use the legs we just barely made here. Press the little buttons in and pull them out. Okay, there's one. And there's the other. Right there. All right, now, daisy chain. A quick connect. There we are. Now, what I can do is just decide, you know, what orientation I want to have here. Spread the legs apart about three feet. So right now I'm going to angle them way in just to help hold everything up while I get everything else ready. Okay, so now see my suspension to the hammock is there, the quick connect cord, or whatever. You, you don't have to use that, but it's handy. Then my cord going out to my anchor is right there. So this whole thing holds it. Now we also like to <coughs> like to draw up the hood. That makes a pocket. And then see I got the stability to rock and all that. No problem, it's easy. I only needed one fixed point and my bipod hammock legs made the other point. Simple, right? Simple, simple.